Microsoft has released their new Surface Go tablet, a new product in their overall Surface lineup. And they were kind enough to let me borrow it, which meant that I was gonna to try to do one of my complete walkthroughs for you guys. And if you're not familiar, a complete walkthrough on my channel is where I try to go through every single feature I possibly can on a device so that you are better prepared should you be in the market to buy one. With that said, there's a lot to go through. Let's start with the stylus. There's no other way to put it. It's a baby Surface Pro. It has the same magnesium casing as the other Surface's two-in-ones and can be attached to a type cover, although it's a specific one for the Surface Go because of its smaller size. It is small, by the way. The device has a 10-inch, 1800 by 1200, 3-to-2 aspect ratio touchscreen. And wait, let's get this out of the way. The bezels. Sure, they look like they're from a much older device in today's day and age of near bezel-less laptops, but Microsoft had an explanation for them. They basically said that the bottom bezel has to be of a certain size to accommodate the magnetic keyboard while still providing enough surface area to physically hold the device up against the hinge and the keyboard angle. And the top bezel is because of all the stuff to handle the front camera and all the components to use Windows Hello, of which the device is capable, by the way, and can unlock using your face like other Windows Hello laptops. And that, by that, the sides had to be a certain size to account for the aspect ratio to have a place to hold the device without touching the screen. And you can decide for yourself what you think about those explanations. But I, for one, could care less because of the price. But we'll get to that in a second. As mentioned, there is Windows Hello hardware above the screen, including a five megapixel camera that can do 1080p video for conference calls. Hidden in the bezels on either side are stereo Dolby audio speakers. And for ports, we have a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, the proprietary surface charger port, magnetic connector for the type cover, a micro SD card slot under the stand, and a USB-C port that is also capable of being used to charge the laptop, which makes it able to work off of portable battery packs like the ones you use for your phone, for example. Also, since this device is all about portability with a name like Go, I think we need to mention that the charging brick, which can sometimes add a significant amount of weight to what you carry around with your ultra-portable laptop, is also tiny and light, and even has retractable outlet prongs which make it less likely to scratch other things in your bag while trekking around. Gotta appreciate the little things sometimes. Now on the back of the device we have our infinitely positionable hinge that can go back to the same degree basically as the Surface Pro. We have our rear-facing 8 megapixel camera, also capable of 1080p video. At the top of the device we have our power button and volume buttons. And we have to talk about the keyboard really quickly too. As though it is an optional accessory technically, I can't recommend getting a Surface Go without it. The keyboard comes in a black version for $99, or one of the colored Alcantara signature versions for $129. The keys have a decent amount of travel, are backlit, and have a glass trackpad that is precision trackpad. Meaning it is more precise, can use Windows gestures, and is just better than not being one. Trust me. It also has a mechanical click mechanism, which I appreciate. Now the keyboard is specific to the Surface Go. You can't use it on the Surface Pro and vice versa. This is due to the size of the keyboard, which is slightly squished in order to fit the 10 inch device. This size also means the keys are squished horizontally and it does take some getting used to, but I got used to it easily within a day. Finally, the device only weighs 1.15 pounds and with the keyboard, it's about two and a half pounds, which is still very light and still deserving of the Go moniker, I think. Under the hood, we have an Intel Pentium Gold 4415Y processor paired with an Intel HD Graphics 615. You can get in two varieties, one with four gigs of RAM and 64 gigs of storage, or eight gigs of RAM and 128 gigs of storage. Battery-wise, we have a 21.6 watt hour battery as per iFixit's teardown, which you can check out below, which is positively tiny. The 2018 iPad is a 32.6 watt hour battery to put that into perspective. But honestly, I've been using it for a little under a week now and I can say I have no complaints about battery life. Uh, also though, keep in mind that I usually use a high performance Razer Blade 15 that can't really last a few hours under heavy load. Now with those configurations, it is of course not a powerful machine. It's obviously meant to be used to browse the web, use the office suite, and it values portability over power. For the software, we're running Windows 10 in S mode, the new name for Windows 10 S, which supposedly increases battery life, performance, and security. But you can only use apps from the Windows App Store, and since that is pretty limited, and a lot of us have an application, at least one or two, that aren't in the App Store we use on a daily basis, you might want to upgrade it to Windows 10 Home when you get it. Thankfully though, you can do so easily by just clicking a few buttons in the settings. This is a one-way upgrade on all laptops, by the way, but if you need it, you're not looking back anyway. As far as bloatware, there are the usual Windows 10 included, whether you want them or not, games, basically. But you can easily uninstall any of them if you want. And now for anyone wondering, here are a few scores to some of the most popular benchmarking apps. Now the biggest thing about this, in my opinion, is that it's a Surface product in a previously untouched category by Microsoft. 
The surface line is becoming more and more popular, thanks in part to uh, better styling, decent hardware, attention to detail, and a lot of other things. And so it's nice to finally see something in this category of the inexpensive ultra portable two-in-one from them as well. So how inexpensive? Well, it starts at $399 for the four gig, 64 gig model. Now that doesn't include the type pad, which as I mentioned, is another 99 for the black one and 129 for the colored Alcantara fabrics. And frankly, I think you sort of need a keyboard for this to be a viable device. So let's just say that it starts at 499. Now the eight gig, 128 gig model is 549, making the total with that, with the keyboard to 649. But 499 and 649 are still a damn good price for a full-blown computer like this. You know, one that can use that obscure printer software that you have to have at your office in order to print that doesn't work on any other platform for some dumb reason. Or Photoshop or Lightroom, the full version, so long as you don't go crazy with layers, to a full web browser and all the other little programs that we've probably accumulated over the years if you've ever used Windows. You can even add $99 to get the Surface Pen, which works pretty well with it, or the Surface Mobile Mouse for $30 that I've been using for a while now that I kind of like. Now I still need to run more tests, like a battery test and a performance test, and I had just spent a little more time with it before I can kind of give a final verdict on this product. But I can say that because of the portability and the price and the fact that it runs full-blown Windows, that the next time somebody asks me for a computer that they need just to do web browsing and they want to be able to travel with easily, etc., I'm at least going to have them probably look at the Surface Go instead of just telling them to go get a Chromebook.